Today we're going to explore whether DIY masks that you're seeing on the internet and YouTube are safe. Can you trust them? And what can you do with supplies that you have around the house to make the safest mask possible? Interested? Here we go. This build came out of frustration. I was reading some articles about how there's not enough mask. I don't have any masks except for these industrial sanding masks and then the really big heavy ones that look like Darth Vader. I was searching on the internet on how to make a good mask. The problem was people were using all sorts of materials and going into all sorts of complexities and some person said, mine is the simplest one and then she pulls out a sewing machine. <laughs> not everybody has sewing machines. I'm going to show you several versions made of materials that you probably have at home and a couple that are easy to find in any store because they're not being rushed on. The other thing is they would make it and they would show it maybe on at the beginning, but they would never give you a validation of how good it was. So I've got a simple test using a light and how you can validate how good your mask is and then you can decide how much filtration you want to put on. You know, it's one designed with paper and I'm telling you right now, I challenge anybody to try to breathe through this paper and yet somebody had spent a lot of time making a mask where this was the filter and it had like 400,000 views and it's not going to work. The trade-offs and decisions are up to you. Anything is better than nothing. But I don't want people to go out there and be kind of surprised about what they think they're getting and what they're not. So I've got this simple test that I've developed using an LED light. And here's just a regular shop kind of mask. And that guy gives you a sense of how much the light is coming through. And that just shows you a relative indication, a quick way of judging what the filtration is. Here's another shop mask. Okay, about the same. Now, if you were really concerned, I guess you could double it up, but then it becomes a breathability issue. Some people will use just a bandana, okay, and you can get a sense of how much the light is leaking through that. That really isn't going to protect you a whole heck of a lot while you're walking around outside. Here's just a regular napkin. It's a four-fold. So you can see one fold. Here's the one ply. So you can, just by quadrupling it up, you can have some filtration. And all these builds are going to require basically no tools just what you have on hand in a little bit of folding here's a paper towel as a comparison once again napkin paper towel this is what it's like if you only fold it once I've breathed through these napkins and paper towels and they work great here is just a regular lens cleaner so that may work, and you can actually breathe through this. Here's what everybody seems to have on hand. <laughs> like a year's supply, toilet paper. You can see where the holes are, where the perforation is. But if you double that up, that's going to give you a fairly good filter. I know a lot of people are trying to use t-shirts. Here it's on a single t-shirt. If you fold it in four, there you go. You can breathe through a t-shirt and then you can just tie it up using the ends. This is a small, it's like a kid's t-shirt. Here's an eight cup coffee filter. I've seen people make them out of coffee filters. I'm not sure one is good enough. You probably have to double it up to give you twice the potential. And can you breathe through those? Yes, you can. But it's not as easy as the paper towels, the toilet paper, and the lens cleaner for the amount of density that you're getting. And here is just a dried baby wipe. There's two ply and then just a single ply. I can kind of see through that a little more than I want, so I'm just gonna double it up when I use it. If I was to rank these things, if I had them all on hand and the paper towel doubled, is pretty effective as is the napkin. This design is specifically made to act as a sandwich where you can throw away the relatively inexpensive material. If you're using this lens cleaner, you can put that in there. And this all can be washed 
before you go out again. If you've spent any time in the United States or other places, I'm sure you know what a bandana is. And bandanas are great because they go around most people's heads and you can just tie them in place. And they'll stay there fairly well. And I'm going to show you a ringed version that goes around your ears. And I'm just going to use this simple bandana approach because I think it's pretty effective. You can use paper clips, elastic rubber bands, or safety pins for certain parts of the design. Or here are some 1 8 some round elastic cord and one quarter. These are, it's a little thicker. I think that's about the same as what they use here on these standard shop masks. This one's a little bigger, so this is probably more of a one quarter inch. And then these are round, and even though it's smaller, it's got a nice grip to it. And you could probably even wash these if you didn't want to throw them away. Probably the most comfortable and arguably the most effective design would be the t-shirt and bandana combination. So all I've done is I've cut out a piece of t-shirt material. I folded the bandana a couple inches from the, the triangle here. I'm going to put my t-shirt material in place. And this, the great thing about this design is it's all 100% washable. And this may fray a little bit, but that's all it's going to do. So you put it in here like that. Bring it over and adjust it for the size of the individual. This is your nose and this is your chin. And then you just tie it up the way we've all tied up bandanas. If you do any lawn work or anything like that. I didn't realize that bandanas themselves were so porous. So now I know, and if I ever <laughs> go out into the yards, I'm probably going to use this kind of design. Now there's other people that want to have things go around their ears. You just take this basic design, and you can fold this over, and fold this over, and wear it like that. And you just put the rubber bands around here like this. And one on this side. And then what I'm thinking there is once I have this all figured out what size to make it, I can take the paper clips and just put those in place. You can use the big ones or the small paper clips. Both work just as well, like that. And then this wraps around your ears. All right, so here it goes. This is what it looks like with the rubber bands. Okay, functional, breathing. I can adjust it so it goes around my nose and my chin. Yep, works. Probably would like it a little tighter, so maybe I would come in a little bit. Okay, so if we come in a little bit, I'm gonna put it back on. Yeah, feel good about that. So it's tight around my nose and my mouth. It's going to stay in place. You can adjust it. That's the great thing about this design. You can come in a little bit. Kids, you can come in. You can make this more narrow. That's going to work great. And for testing purposes, I've got the light going on. And you can see there's no penetration whatsoever of the light. So there's heavy filtration going on, and yet it's very comfortable and customizable. For just the straight bandana without the loops on there, we'll give you a sense of the light test. Again, no penetration. So let's just try the straight bandana without the ear connectors. Now the great thing about this design is you can wrap it around. It's going to be as tight as you want. It's not as many layers because this part isn't folded in. But you look like you're going to rob some place. <laughs> but I guess any mask is going to be like that. And it's very effective. It comes around the chin, goes around the nose, totally adjustable. 
You can breathe through it. I feel like I could wear this pretty much all day long as long as the temperature wasn't around 80 degrees. If the temperature's around 80 degrees, you might want to thin it up a little bit. Maybe only use one. If the, if the temperature's around 80 degrees, you may just want to thin it up a little bit, take out layers of the t of the t-shirt, and I think you'd be fine. So let's try a different material with the mask. Here's the paper towel. Fold it up just like we did before. Up, down, over, and we'll do the test on that with the light. Okay, you can see through that one a little bit. Again, I don't know how you would validate N95 level conditions, but I think if you get enough layers, you're going to be safe. This is just the paper towel doubled up. Actually a little more freer than the doubled up t-shirt. Works well. I can breathe. I can get the protection all the way around. Suppose you got to watch your eyes too, so I would wear sunglasses or glasses if you have them, and that's going to help too. So that works. I think that the rubber bands work just fine, but if you happen to have or are able to get this soft stretch elastic, whether it's a quarter inch or an eighth of an inch, this is 22 inches. I've folded it over so it's 11 inches long. I'm just going to cut it in the middle. There you go. And then I'm just going to take the ends and put a square knot around them. Again, you could adjust this any size you want. This is to make it to look more standard mask-like. So a simple square knot, pull it in place. That's nice and tight. Do the same for this. It may be more comfortable than a rubber band, but again, that means you have to go out and purchase something. The whole idea of the designs I've come up with is that it's all on hand. Most people have paper clips. Most people have rubber bands. Most people have some sort of a bandana. Okay, just pull it tight. There you go. So you've got two things to go around your ears. You take where the knotted area is, come back this way, get out of the rubber bands, you've lost your job. Fold this over, fold this over, okay. you put this in, you can make this adjustment. 11 inches seems to work fine. You get four yards of this stuff. This is a couple dollars at a big box store or a craft store. Now this time I'm going to show you using safety pins because they work just as well. Again, no sewing. Maybe a pair of scissors, depending on which design you decide to go with. Make sure you get it through all the layers. Nice and tight. So here we go. This is the safety pin and the soft stretch elastic version. Okay, works. It fits loosely on my face, so I'd have to adjust it. Either I could make this smaller on the sides, the white sides here, or just bring it in a little bit more. But as far as the chin area and the nose, good protection. Okay, and just because I don't like to endorse things that I haven't tried, I'm going to use the coffee filter. Now I'm going to take the coffee filters and there's two of them here this is like an eight cup coffee filter and I'm gonna cut this material down so it fits a little better in the mask okay, there you go put it in like this down in there lap it over once down and since I had problems, so that's right at the top of the coffee filter on both sides. And you can cut down as much as you think you need. And since I was having problems with it being a little too big, I'm going to bring this guy in here like this. Fold him down like that. And just make it a little shorter this way. 
and I'm going to put the safety pins in. Now, I think the safety pins for this design work slightly better than the paper clips. Not everybody's going to have safety pins. All right, that's one side. Come around to the other side. And first got to put that elastic on the inside of this. Get out of there, paper clip. You're not in this part of the design. Now where's the other safe pin? There it is. Now with the design that goes around your ears, you get extra filtration because you got this fold in on both sides. Okay. And the great thing about this design is that it's washable. You could even throw it in. You could probably throw it in the way it is there, but the coffee filters aren't washable. You'd have to throw those away. All right, then, a little crunchy. Let's do the light test on it just to see how good it is. All right, you can't see through it whatsoever, so that's good. Now the fit check. Okay, here we go. This is the elastic bands around the ears with the coffee filter. Okay, a little crunchy. Still think I can come in a little bit on this elastic band or just tighten the bump a little bit. But it works. It's going to give you the protection you need. You could probably go with a 10 or even a 9 inch on the white cords, depending on how much you tied them up. Probably even an eight inches if you didn't have so much tail on them, like I do. That's probably an inch of tail on either side, so probably eight inches of cord to stretch your cord budget a little bit and make more. And then the bandanas, 50 cents a piece. If you don't have them on hand, coffee filters, old t-shirts. Thumbs up and comments, always appreciated. Thanks for watching. Tell me what you think of this. Did I hit the mark? Or is there better ways of doing it? And be cautious. Please be cautious out there. Wash your hands. Take care of yourself and, and your family and friends and even strangers. Try to provide them what they need in order to survive this horrible situation that we're going through. And be careful of other people's builds. Because again, they're not testing them out like I am, validating that the designs work. It's your life. You have to decide how safe you want to make it.